Hello, everybody. I'd like to welcome to our next session, Fine Grain API Authorization Using 3 Scale and Authorization System. My name is Sergio Canales, and it's my pleasure to introduce our speaker for today's session, uh, Abdel Hamid Soliman. A uh, few logistics before we get started. Uh, if you have any questions during the session, please submit it in the chat, uh, and we will try to cover at the end of the session. Um, or we will make a point to follow up uh, after the event and the presentations. Uh, for the recording, all the sessions today will be available uh, in the event hosted on YouTube. So you can uh, have the opportunity uh, to check after. Um, also, uh, I encourage you to use the live chat during the break in the main stage. You always have the opportunity in the main stage to retake and have some exchange. And say so. Uh, and with that, let me turn uh, things over Abdel Hamid. Yeah, so welcome, ev welcome everyone. Uh, it's great to be here. And thank you for joining us today in the Divination event. So, my, my name is Abdel Hamid Sulaiman. Uh, I am a solution architect in Red Hat. I, I work in the EMEA team as a specialist in ABI management and Red Hat integration. Um, we have an exciting talk, to, talk for you today on fine grained ABI authorizations uh, with a series scale ABI management. So, uh, I, 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 I will talk about the centralized authorization systems. Uh, basically, we have two, uh, two authorization systems uh, I will talk about. The first one is a key clock authorization service. So I, I will describe how to integrate it with CityScale ABI management using a custom policy. And the second one is uh, OBA or Open Policy Agents. So I will describe how to integrate uh, uh, OBA with CityScale ABI Gateway. Uh, using a custom policy. So uh, by the end, we will have a demo and uh, questions and answer. Uh, so by the end of this talk, you will know how to use and configure uh, these policies in series scale uh, ABI gateway. So uh, let's begin by looking at uh, all was the top uh, 10 ABI security. Uh, so, if, 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 if you are not familiar uh, what this uh, top 10 uh, is, uh, uh, the, uh, the Open Web Application Security Project is uh, a, a non-profit community that produces best practice for uh, web application security. Uh, so, the, the, the whole idea is to improve the security for uh, web applications and the area of uh, APIs, uh, they do the same. Uh, so they uh, they have a, a analyzed number of security a, a, a incidents related to ABIs and they come up with a, a head of a top ten. So starting from uh, number one being uh, the most uh, widely seen uh, vulnerability. Uh, as you can see here, uh, uh, four of them uh, are related to uh, authorization, uh, which which are in, in green color. So, which need to be mitigated by uh, uh, by organizations. Uh, so, I, I will not go into the details of uh, those vulnerabilities, but I will discuss how to solve it in terms of uh, authorization. So, uh, uh, to, to to prevent uh, uh, the authorization vulnerabilities you, of course, need to implement authorization uh, logic. Uh, but before that, I, I want to uh, uh, to take a little story. Uh, so uh, 20 years ago, everyone was building their own authentication system. So uh, I remember that everyone thought uh, uh, it's easy. So we need just database table with username and password, and we will build our authentication system. Uh, but what ended up, it, 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 it requires more uh, sophisticated uh, uh, requirements like uh, uh, email verification, like, for example, two-factor authentication, uh, like hashing algorithm. So, which, uh, which, which, which at the end, uh, it led up to, uh, to challenges with consistency, a challenge with security, 
uh, and the channels with its scalability. So uh, that's why uh, uh, most of modern applications that use a centralized authentication component like uh, identity management solution or KeyLock. So uh, uh, all, uh, all of these reasons apply also to the authorization challenge. So in the left side here in the source code, uh, we have a quite simple condition, if, if it's just if condition, to check uh, the rule-based access control, when, where only users granted a manager role uh, can access the protected resource. So what would happen if your requirement it changes and you need to uh, to, to access uh, 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 to, to access the same resource to a specific uh, user name or or even you want to include an admin role to, to access the resource uh, or perhaps you want to leverage another access control strategy like epic or attribute based access control to, for example, check the time, check the user context uh, to allow access to the resource. So you need to change your code, you need to deploy your code, uh, because here the code is, uh, the authorization logic is tightly coupled inside your code. So in the right side, in the right side, we, we don't have any reference to a specific access control mechanism. So uh, access control is based on, uh, on the resource you are protecting and your application is only concerned with the permissions granted by an external authorization service. So this is a concept of centralized authorization, uh, which allows you to externalize the access management and, it, it, uh, and decisions from your application using an, an external authorization component. All right, so, but what, what are the benefits of using centralized uh, authorization components? So, uh, in a distributed systems and the microservice architecture, we will have many uh, uh, ABIs, many uh, services, which become hard to manage and to operate. So, using a centralized authorization, the administrators can easily define and enforce access rules from a central location, which will simplify the access management. Uh, with also a centralized component, of course, you will have the uh, simplified admin operations, where the administrator can efficiently uh, manage uh, the user access and the permissions from a, a web console, like a KeyClock web console, for example. Also, from, um, uh, from the security team perspective, it, 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 it becomes easier to do security uh, review for permissions. So they can, uh, they can review access, what, uh, what are they are responsible uh, for. So they can check for compliance, for example. They can make sure, uh, for example, uh, this organization doesn't give access credit card data uh, unless the user is uh, uh, secured or has a two-factor authentication. So it becomes an easier for, for also uh, uh, auditing and compliance. And for, for, from developer perspective, they can build the application faster as the application code uh, is decoupled from the authorization roles which is uh, make the, uh, the code it changes can use, can push it changes quickly without uh, even security check or security uh, reviews. All right, so let's here have a look about uh, city scale uh, high level architecture. Uh, we, uh, we uh, city scale has uh, basically uh, uh, Two components. As the first one is the ABI manager, which is the control plane and the configuration management component. So ABI provider can uh, use as uh, admin portal uh, to uh, create an ABI product, to configure policies, uh, to view uh, analytics, to monetize APIs, and to manage uh, content of the developer portals. 
and uh, the ABI gateway. The ABI gateway is uh, the runtime component that is uh, deployed uh, uh, between uh, the, the consumer application and the ABI backend to, uh, to act as a, a reverse proxy so it can protect uh, the ABI's backend. Uh, and uh, and the, the, the goal here for the API gateway is to uh, uh, is to enforce policies. So policies like uh, rate limiting, uh, authentication, authorization, uh, content uh, caching, dynamic routing, and others. Also, it can have some sort of uh, cross cutting uh, concern like logging and auditing. Uh, besides that, we have the developer portal, which is used for to socialize the API to uh, to API consumers and we sell the service like uh, um, registration, uh, like uh, documentation hub for the APIs. So they can easily discover the APIs. All right. So. Uh, so city scale uh, ABI gateway, ABI gateway uh, which we name it ABI Cast, uh, 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 has a, a policy framework. This policy framework uh, uh, allows developers to, uh, to to have a custom logic to, to deploy their uh, custom policy uh, in, in order to extend the, the capability of the ABI gateway uh, using custom policies. So. Policies uh, can be written uh, in Lua and deployed to uh, ABI Gateway. Uh, also, the ABI Gateway uh, has built in set of uh, uh, more than 40 uh, policies uh, as uh, ready for uh, only uh, configurations without any coding. It's out of the box capability inside the ABI Gateway. All right, so, uh, but in terms of the authorization capability in the ABI gateway, uh, the ABI gateway, the ABI gateway uh, itself has a policy to, uh, uh, to manage the authorization uh, uh, in the OpenID Connect, so it, which is a GWT claim uh, check policy. Uh, and this policy uh, uses the token based authorization concept which is based on validating a token and using information stored in the token to, uh, to decide if the access should be allowed or denied uh, on a particular uh, HTTP resource. So in, uh, in, in this example, uh, if, uh, if the user is uh, uh, administrator or has the, the, uh, uh, in the token uh, uh, Kirim has a role called ad admin. He will allow you to access uh, the resource. But uh, 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 we want uh, our objective here is to decouple the policy decisions from the API gateway as I described the issues uh, in the microservice. So as pushing all the authorization decisions to API gateway can quickly become harder to manage in complex ecosystems with many uh, roles and with many access uh, control uh, uh, rules. So from, from design pattern uh, perspective and best practice, uh, the API gateway should be uh, a policy enforcement point where the authorization system should be uh, a policy uh, decision point. So, so that we we need to uh, to have an integration between the API gateway and the authorization system, which I will describe in the next section. All right. So in the next section, I will go through uh, the Kicklock uh, uh, authorization service. So if, uh, um, if you are not familiar with uh, Kicklock, uh, so it's a, 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 a Kicklock is a, a popular open source identity and access management solution. Um, it's, uh, it, it's designed for, uh, for, uh, uh, for modern applications like single page applications and for APIs and the microservice. 
uh, it's also uh, designed to be a, a, a nice and easy for developers uh, to use. It, it, it has support of uh, many standards protocol like uh, OpenID Connect uh, and SAML uh, to, to secure and authenticate uh, microservices and APIs. Uh, it also can read uh, users' uh, data from uh, different sources like database or LDAP and others. It has also capability to uh, to do uh, identity uh, uh, brokering to delegate uh, authentication uh, to external uh, identity providers uh, like uh, login with a social uh, network like Google and Facebook. And it has also uh, uh, more features. Uh, but one of uh, uh, interesting feature here is uh, the authorization service. So uh, Kicklock uh, provides uh, uh, a, a module or, or a feature to, to, to allow you to define fine grained uh, authorization rules. All right. So uh, um, so uh, Kicklock uh, authorization services are built on uh, uh, well-known standards protocol like OS2 and uh, uh, user managed uh, access specifications. Uh, uh, we're here. Uh, uh, Kicklock uh, provides uh, uh, fine-grained uh, authorization uh, service to in order to uh, uh, define. Uh, as, as access control. So, uh, so here uh, uh, it consists of uh, uh, different uh, objects. So the first one is uh, the resource. You you, you basically need uh, to uh, create uh, the resources. Uh, so the resource here is uh, the object uh, being protected. So in case of uh, risk area, it might be uh, the risk uh, in the point. Uh, uh, and you, uh, after you define the resource, you need also to uh, to create a scope. So a scope it's uh, what can be done with uh, a resource. So you have you have, for example, a REST endpoint uh, or a REST resource. So you can, for example, have a scope for uh, for view for HTTP uh, method view or for a delete method to delete a resource or for uh, 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 update methods to in order to edit the resource. Uh, after you create the scope, uh, you need to uh, define uh, the policy. So the policy here is, is a condition that must be satisfied to grant access to a resource. So policy might be uh, based on uh, uh, based on uh, rabbit or rule based access control, or it might be based on uh, a context. Uh, or it might be based on uh, attribute-based access control. So you can uh, have a condition like the, uh, the con uh, user time or uh, the time allowed to access the resource. Or also you can have flexibility to uh, to create a, a JavaScript uh, to, to define a, a, a policy based on JavaScript. So after creating a scope and the resource and the policies, you, you need to, uh, uh, to, act, to to correlate uh, those objects together, which which inside the permission. So you create a permission and you associate uh, the, uh, the resource with the scope and one or more policies. And uh, um, the, uh, the authorization service also provide uh, a REST API, so you can integrate with uh, uh, with it uh, using uh, the REST API. So in the REST API, you, you identify, for example, the resource and the scope and the token, uh, and the Kicklock authorization service will reply to you with uh, a decision either to allow or deny the request. So in, uh, in, uh, 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 in the course management use case, uh, and this use case which we will use uh, through the demo and the other uh, slides. Uh, we, we basically have uh, two actors, the student and the teacher. So teachers only will be allowed to delete a, a, a course. And both uh, student and the teacher 
will be allowed to uh, view courses. So when designing REST APIs of this use case, uh, you will have a, a course resource with two HTTP methods. The first one is the GET to actually view the courses. And the second one is, uh, is delete method to, uh, to delete uh, the course. So, uh, uh, so as we are talking about three scale, and we want to integrate three scale with Kicklock uh, uh, authorization service. So we have a, a, a community policy which is existed in this GitHub uh, repo, uh, which is written in, in Lua. So after uh, cloning this repo and uh, installing uh, this uh, policy into uh, ABI gateway, you, you can have this kind of uh, architecture. So let's begin with uh, the end user. So we have uh, here the teacher, the end user, uh, is trying to use a uh, uh, mobile application or web-based application uh, and uh, the application which uses a uh, uh, scale API gateway uh, which is uh, configured here uh, API product to uh, to secure uh, the course service uh, backend uh, using OpenID Connect. So KickLock here acts as a uh, uh, open ID Connect uh, provider or OS2 provider, and also it acts as a, a, a authorization uh, module. So once the teacher uh, provided his username and password or authenticated uh, through uh, uh, the application and the key clock, uh, he will uh, has here uh, a token, JWT token. Uh, then the application will use this token for each request to uh, to the API gateway. So uh, if the user trying to delete the course, then the token will be attached to this HTTP call to three scale API gateway, and the three scale uh, API gateway uh, will has uh, uh, de deployed uh, the policy of Kicklock uh, authorizer policy. This policy will check uh, will check uh, the um, uh, the HTTP resource uh, against the configuration for uh, for the con for uh, for defining a key clock uh, uh, resource and the key clock scope in order to send uh, an authentication request to to key clock authorization service. So it will send a, a, a key clock authorization request uh, attaching the, the resource and the scope. Uh, then key clock will respond with uh, either uh, true or false. So uh, based on that, the ABI gateway will uh, allow or deny the request based on a decision determined from uh, the key clock authorization service. So, so in this architecture, uh, KickLock uh, act as uh, a policy decision. Uh, on the other hand, ABI Gateway uh, acts as uh, a policy enforcement. All right, so um, as I described uh, before, uh, uh, in order to configure KickLock authorization service, we can use uh, uh, the admin uh, uh, console of KickLock in order to create uh, uh, artifacts inside uh, Kicklock authorization service. So in our use case, here you need to create the course resource and uh, you need to create two scopes, one for delete, other for get. And you need also to define uh, uh, two policies, uh, one for students and second for teacher based on uh, rule-based access control. And after that, you you will create a, a permission. So we, you will create a, a delete permission in order to uh, to, to to attach uh, each uh, resource and scope uh, and policy. All right. So also you need to configure this policy 
uh, inside city scale. So uh, you need to correlate your HTTP uh, uh, mapping rule to uh, a, a key clock uh, resource and the scope in order to allow the policy to 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 uh, to call uh, the REST API of key clock to check uh, the authorization. So uh, here. Uh, the configurations based on uh, on the course management uh, use case. All right. So um, in the next segment, I will uh, uh, describe another uh, uh, authorization uh, component, which is an uh, open policy agent. So uh, OPA or open policy agent is. Uh, is an open source uh, general uh, wireless policy engine. Uh, it's, uh, it's actually uh, uh, has the concept of uh, uh, policy as code, uh, where uh, policies are written in declarative language called uh, repo. So, uh, So OBA uh, also evaluate uh, uh, the policies against uh, um, against uh, uh, input data. So uh, to 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 check if uh, uh, if this user is allowed or denied. So uh, uh, so the decision uh, uh, of uh, of the OBA might be based on uh, uh, definition of a policy and and also definition of uh, an input uh, data. Uh, so, in order to integrate uh, uh, to create the scale API gateway with uh, uh, OBA, we need a policy. So, this policy also existed in uh, this GitHub repo. Uh, so, uh, here is uh, the flow of, uh, uh, of OBA. It's, it's similar to uh, Kicklock uh, flow. So, we have here uh, the end user. Uh, uh, end user wants to authenticate first to, uh, uh, to into the application uh, where the authentication uh, will be through uh, Kicklock. So Kicklock here act as an Open ID Connect uh, provider. Uh, after the authentication, um, the user will have a, a token into the application. Then we will attach this token for each uh, API request to the API gateway. And the API gateway uh, uh, will be configured with uh, OBA policy uh, uh, to integrate with uh, uh, OBA through uh, HTTP call uh, in order to uh, to uh, to get the decisions from OBA. Uh, but this policy need need to send some data from the request to to OBA uh, repo file or to OBA policy. Uh, so. Um, uh, this input data are based on it sends all uh, uh, the message body and uh, the all headers attributes uh, all query strings and uh, it sends also uh, the the, the pass or URL URI which is uh, input and based on the decision it will uh, either so it will allow the request to to the to the course surface or it will send or it will send uh, for zero three or unauthorized uh, uh, HTTP response to the client application. So, so again, uh, in this architecture, uh, OBA engine uh, act as a policy decision. On the other hand, the API gateway acts as a, a policy enforcement. All right. So, and to configure this policy in three scale, it's it's. Uh, very easy to configure, so you need to provide the URL of uh, the OPA policy API, and uh, optional you can have an error message to return to to the user. All right, so here, here is an example of uh, of a repo policy. So uh, uh, as we as as our use case, we want to allow only the teacher to delete a course. So uh, in this policy, uh, you uh, you need to, uh, to 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 check if the HTTP method is delete and if the uh, uh, the input uh, resource code is of course. Uh, 
uh, and then we need to, to check the GWT uh, claim, uh, uh, GWT claim has a, a, a role called a teacher. Uh, if that is allowed, so the request, if that is true, the request will be allowed and the OPA will return uh, uh, allowed to, as a decision to do the API gateway. All right, so now we have uh, two policies uh, in, in, in GitHub repo. So we need to install it to our uh, ABI cast. So uh, as the repo describes the steps, but here I am just uh, uh, describing uh, quickly. So the, of course, you need to install uh, uh, ABI cast on, uh, on OpenShift using uh, the operator. So you need to install uh, the operator from the operator hub. Then you need to create, uh, to connect the, the gateway to, to, to the API manager uh, using uh, access token. So you, you create an access token for uh, in, the admin, in the admin console. Then you create uh, an open shift uh, secret in, in order to allow the API gateway to access uh, uh, the API manager. Then you create uh, a secret for the policy. So in order to store the uh, source code or the Lua files uh, into the uh, uh, ABI cast. So we create a secret that contains uh, only uh, the Lua files and the policy code. After that, you create, you create an ABI, ABI cast CR where uh, you create uh, here an uh, uh, example for uh, ABI cast. And optionally, uh, you, you create a custom policy definition CR in the ABI manager in order to, uh, to view uh, the, the policy uh, in, in the admin uh, portal uh, UI. So in order to uh, allow the admin portal to, to, to render the, uh, the policy configurations. All right, so in the last segments, I will go through uh, the demo. I, so the first step I will show here is a uh, 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 kick lock. So I will show here uh, the configurations of uh, 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 of kick lock authorization servers. Uh, here uh, I have uh, inside my clients. I have uh, inside the clients. Uh, I have the authorization uh, option. Uh, inside the authorization uh, tab, I will have all the resources which I described. So I, I create a resource called course. Then I create two scopes, one for get and the other for delete. Then I created policies, one for students uh, and uh, a second for teacher. And uh, both are from type uh, role. Then I attach the uh, uh, the, uh, the policies with the scope and the resources into the permission. So here, the permission, it's just kind of attachment. So here is, for example, the delete permission, where I attach the course resource with the scope delete with the teacher. And also, Kicklip authorization service has a nice feature to evaluate your uh, uh, your uh, your artifacts and your definition for uh, your authorization rules. So, uh, uh, you, you, for example, let's, I created two users, one for students and second for teacher. Let's, let's check here uh, the students. So uh, here is uh, a user called the students. Uh, and uh, the scope, the resource, of course, is the course. And the scope, I want to check the delete and uh, get also. So this evaluation will, it, it's just for, for uh, testing. So, so after you develop your uh, rules, you can use this evaluation in order to test the decision. So I, you see here, uh, I have uh, here, uh, uh, I, I am allowed to, uh, as uh, a student to, uh, to 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 get the courses, and I'm not allowed to uh, delete the courses. All right. So 
So this concludes uh, uh, the key block uh, uh, configurations. Uh, for series scale, here is the admin uh, portal for series scale. Uh, I have uh, here product, ABI product called course management. Uh, inside this ABI product, it protects uh, a back end called uh, course management. These uh, ABIs uh, are uh, this is the URL of the, of the back end, which is the API Gateway Protects. And the API uh, product is, uh, is configured to authenticate the user using uh, OpenID Connect protocol with uh, Red Hat Signal Sign On or Kick Lock uh, uh, provider. And in terms of policies here, I uh, added as a kick lock uh, authorizer policy uh, uh, with the configurations of uh, the kick lock resource name and the kick lock scope, scope uh, for, it, for each URL mapping. So we need to, uh, to, to, to have a relationship between uh, a resource, HTTP resource or HTTP URL mapping uh, with HTTP verb and with kick lock uh, uh, resource and uh, method. So uh, these configurations uh, describe it. Uh, and in terms of uh, mapping rule, I, I have here uh, the course uh, URL, URL, so with uh, two verbs, get and delete. So I can from deploy to my API cast and test it in, uh, uh, in software. So let's use a, a testing tool to in order to to send uh, a request to uh, to uh, to three scale ABI gateway. Uh, so I, I use here a, a tool called Postman. Uh, Postman, uh, a very famous tool in uh, in the ABI. So in the authorization here, I, I need to to have a token to to uh, to get a token in order to access uh, the the ABI. So let's get an access token. So uh, I need to authenticate. Let's let's try to authenticate with uh, as a user of a student. After authentication, uh, I I will have a, a token. This token I post uh, uh, will will attach it to, to the header for the request to the API gateway. Let's test the get courses. So get courses return successful with, uh, uh, with a JSON response uh, as I am allowed to, uh, to get the course. So let's try delete a course as a student. So here is the delete. As a student, I shouldn't be allowed. So here, uh, the ABI gateway return uh, 403 uh, with uh, an error message in, uh, in the body. So, so here we we are able to 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 test uh, 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 the policy using uh, uh, using a post man. So, in the last segment, I will receive your questions, and uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. All right. No questions. So uh, at the end, uh, we uh, we learned uh, uh, the concept of. Uh, uh, centralized authorization systems and we uh, learned how to integrate uh, a kick lock authorization service and uh, OBA with a C-scale API gateway using uh, community policies uh, and uh, I would like to to thank you very much for uh, 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 for attending this session
and I am I am uh, happy to receive uh, your feedback and uh, about the policies. Uh, and if people have any questions. Thank you very much, Abdel Hamid. Uh, we were looking at the chat. It is quiet for now. We don't have questions, so um, we are pretty much closing. We are on time um, for this last uh, moment. Uh, maybe a question from my side that I work on uh, consulting. Uh, any tips or any recommendation by uh, people who is starting with this? Because this is like a new way to work a lot of people need to integrate with it. So maybe from your experience, like any good things or maybe things to avoid? Yeah, yeah. So um, I, I, I totally uh, re recommend uh, starting uh, by uh, uh, looking into uh, the authorization uh, code uh, into your microservice and to, uh, to start uh, uh, using uh, the, the Kiklog authorization uh, service with uh, assemble uh, rules like uh, uh, like uh, rule based access control or uh, or any simplified uh, approach so you, you start uh, 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 defining your rules across applications you start uh, also with uh, designing uh, your uh, authorization solo application then you can apply the, the idea of centralized uh, authorization. So you can apply it using, uh, if you are using uh, Quarkus or if you are using uh, 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 Spring Boot. Uh, so Kiklock provides uh, uh, plugins and the library to, uh, to integrate it with, uh, uh, with the authorization service. Uh, uh, also, I talked about the integration with uh, ABI Gateway, like uh, CSKN. So uh, others also ABI gateway uh, can be also integrated with uh, the Kiklog authorization service. Good, wonderful. Thank you very much, Abdel Hamid. Um, so uh, we are pretty much done here. Uh, I want to thank you. It was a wonderful presentation. Thank you everyone uh, for joining us today. Uh, we hope that you enjoyed the session. Um, you can reach us anytime. Uh, for further questions, you can, uh, you will have the the recordings on YouTube. So anything new, you can always reach out uh, by email or maybe and maybe any social contact that uh, is available. Uh, a reminder, uh, a reminder that the other session uh, will be available soon. Uh, be sure to uh, stay for the next presentation and hope over in the main stage to see like all the session that is. Uh, uh, starting uh, right now at the same time. So thank you very much for your time and see you next time. Bye-bye.